Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. In today's video, I want to show you a cool technique I found for creating hair fur, stuff like that. I've talked about this on this channel before, but uh, I think this, this method's even a little bit cooler, so just decided to share that with you. This will be the canvas that we kind of work out the effect on, um, but I'm also going to, let's see, create a new document. I'll make this 2x2 two two at 300. And it's real simple. It's kind of so simple. It's sweet kind of thing. I'll make a new layer. I'll just color in one of these uh, little dots here. Deselect it. It's its own layer, so I'll just hold Alt and uh, drag, and I get another copy of that. Command T or Control T with a PC, and hold Shift, and I can drag that uh, the same. Uh, proportions or whatever hold alt again command T and just repeat that process enter and then I'll merge these down after I'm done but just kind of randomly move these around it kind of resembles the spatter brush that uh, comes with Photoshop and I've explained that to people before but they seem a little bit you know confused that like maybe I have a special brush or something so what I'm doing is I'm showing you how to make a brush similar to that and uh, you know, I'm going to show you the things that kind of make the brush work well or not. And it's basically kind of the placement of these dots, but, you know, and then how many dots. So you can do a variety of these brushes and get a feel for what works well for what you're trying to paint. But it's amazing that just these little dots, um, you know, make such a cool brush, such a usable and functional brush. But that's kind of where you have to figure out the way that these brushes work. And then you can come up with all kinds of neat ways to save time and create brushes that are, uh, you know, just just pretty cool to use. So I'll just repeat in this process. Now, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but what I'm trying to do is actually make sure that a few of the brushes in the middle of the, uh, the brush setup right through here are essentially closer to like almost a diamond shape. If you can see, see what I'm doing there. Um, doesn't have to be exactly like that, but uh, it'll give me a little bit more of a point. You'll see as I start to use the brush when I'm done with this portion of it. And that's almost enough. I'll do a couple more and we'll call it good. And it's cool because each one of these little dots becomes a strand in the, the paint process. So that's what you want to kind of look for. Again, I'm purposely trying to put a few of them at the very uh, points of the design, or the ends. And I don't want to leave any gaps of space too large. So I'm going to try right about there. I think that's about right. I'll do one more small one right through here. Okay, so let's try that. I have one more. What the heck? Okay, so we'll try that right there. So... Now what happens is I just go layer, flatten image, all that becomes one, you know, unified document, edit, define brush preset, I've got a bunch of these now, but I'll call this uh, hair, fur, brush, by RAM. And I think I'm going to make this available on my uh, DeviantArt, so I'll, uh, I'll include that in a link below. Once I get that posted on my DeviantArt, so I know we gotta make it easier for people that, you know, don't quite get this or whatever, but it's pretty easy to follow. So now that brush should be the last one selected, and there it is, or should be already be selected because that's the last one I grabbed. And, oh, I'm on color mode, let's put that on normal. I've got my flow and opacity really low, and you see I kinda get this stippling effect, which is kinda neat, but that's not what I'm after. So. Go into the brush settings here, turn my spacing way down because I want these to be unified, and transfer, which is obviously one of my favorite settings, pen pressure, pen pressure, and let's see what we got now. Again, opacity and flow are really low, and that's what I want. I want a nice, soft kind of build-up process, so I get these nice texture lines as I start to overlay it. Uh, let me make sure I'm on a separate layer here. Nope, figures. 
I always forget to do that. Command Alt Z to get back. Okay. So now first I'll do like a sample of some hair to show you how well this works. And what you're trying to do is overlap the strokes and then move the strokes, you know, to the side. So you'll do a bunch that are kind of all the same angle. Then you'll do some that go right across. Because that's how, you know, hair really shapes or whatever. And then you'll turn the brush down to varying, you know, turn it really low, really, really big, whatever. Mix it up and just kind of have them free flowing around the really small strands. You'll just kind of have flickering all around the uh, the longer area or whatever, the, lo the larger form. So like that. And turn it really large. Get some more texturing going on and build... You know, you're looking for shapes too. So that's the other thing to keep in mind when you're doing hair is you want to try to find, you don't want just this flat looking kind of mass. You want to find some shapes in there. So then hit X and now you're painting with white. Come back in there. And again, try to keep going back and forth so you define some cool shapes in there. Use the bracket keys to interactively size your brush and down to create random uh, a randomized factor so you can see it's starting to take form but I just kind of keep painting back and forth till I get it sometimes I get it right away other times I gotta keep painting it just depends sometimes I scrap it and start over but the brush itself is very functional it's it's you know it's already working um, and really quick so the other thing that I'll do too to help me find some of these forms I'm looking for is I can throw in some dodge and burn in there and really pull out some of these little highlights and and also working off a darker background. Sometimes that helps you see into the forms a little bit more and uh, more quickly. So then I take the dodge and I usually paint against the forms like this. Yeah, so you can see it's starting to work. That's starting to look like hair. So I'll move that over and create a new layer. And the same brush, obviously that's the same as fur, so you could really just get away with doing that same thing. Fur is just going to be a little bit more, well, I guess like grass. And I'm going to show you how this makes a really good grass effect too. Well, and actually, instead of making this boring and just doing it with uh, black and white, I'll show you how I could take the same thing and just paint with color. And it's all just off dots, which is pretty impressive. Who would have thought? But you know, that's what I was trying to explain to people when I was, you know, I paint this stuff and I would grab the stipple brush and I get all these comments in the section below that said, you know, what brush is that? What brush is that? What settings, you know? And uh, all I really had was, well, even like this one, it's just transfer, you know? I don't use shape dynamics, it kind of gets in the way a little bit. You want to just interactively use the bracket keys and keep resizing your brush. To me, that's more effective for this type of uh, painting. And that's why I also put those, you know, those dots at the top. If you notice, the strand has a little bit more of a point to it. And I could actually, you know, rework it a little bit more. It's, it kind of didn't work out as well as I thought. Um, but that's why. So I don't have to do any shape dynamics. So basically the way that you build upon the brush, you can kind of get that effect. And you see I'm just making the brush all different sizes, I'm pushing in different directions. And I'm going to show you another cool uh, technique here in a second to really bring this, uh, bring this out. So say this is a big mass of grass or a furry creature, you know, whatever, whatever you're doing. And then I could take this color, drop it way down, start painting in some darker values in there and, and get it looking a little more depthy and real. Again, it would look better if I was painting against a, uh, a color in the backdrop. Probably some blues or something or some earth tones to really help me see what tones I should be using to make this look more realistic. Again, I'm sizing it different sizes as I go. I keep my hand on those, uh, those bracket keys. There's that. 
I'll go just a tad darker. You gotta have a lot of variation in the, the tones. You know, if you just got a couple colors in there, it's not gonna look right. There's so many colors. Uh, you know, one of the best ways to kind of test that is grab some photo reference and sit there and sample the colors with the uh, the alt, hold alt, sample them, and you'll be amazed. I mean, even in skin tone, there's like five, six colors, bare minimal, just in, you know, if you're going to paint a face and make it look good, you got to at least add that many colors or it, it just looks really weak. And it's like that with a lot of things that you wouldn't expect. Okay, so we're starting to get some tones in there, starting to get a little bit of, you know, somewhat realistic. Again, you can grab that dodge tool, go across it this way, burn in some of those highlights and make it look like where the, the light's coming through the, the top of the grass a little bit. Uh, you got to be sparingly with it. And then you can grab the burn tool and, you know, maybe hit the mid-tones, but probably go right to the shadows, really low setting. Just hit a couple little spots just to make it look really depthy. And then grab your smudge tool and go right down to the same brush. And now with that smudge tool, excuse me. Now with that smudge tool, get rid of this. Get a little bit closer like this. Grab that smudge tool, size it down. And now you can just, you know, blend and, and, you know, blur those edges just a little bit. But using that same brush where it keeps that form that you're after, get rid of some of these artifacts that don't look, you know, accurate. Grab some of this darker color, move it around. Grab some of that lighter color, bring it in. You know, so that's all you're doing. You're just playing around with it and having some fun and, you know, seeing what sticks. Throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. So... Yeah, so that's really it. I mean, you know, you just keep going until you get what you like. Like, I almost want to take some of that green now. You know, maybe I'll take this brush again, sample some of that green highlight, and do just a little bit in the front of this to kind of add another level of, of depth. Just a few of these strands in front of the darker strands. And again, that's just me thinking it'll it'll give another small layer of depth but that's it pretty simple you know um i don't know what i did there why well, there's a little dot there oh well but yeah so at any rate hopefully that's helped you i'll make sure to include the uh the brush into my deviantart and i'll drop that in the section below uh, so you can follow the link and uh, let me know what you think but yeah essentially just to recap in case you didn't catch any of that it's uh it looks like that really simple just made it with some circles and uh you do that by going to you know putting it on its own palette or own layer like that i use two by two by 300 dpi it's probably a little bit big but then i know i can really size that brush up and not lose clarity go to edit define brush preset give it a name save it in your your many many brushes that you accumulate and then uh, adjust your settings over here in your brush is uh, setting and I just go transfer pen pressure pen pressure not to say you can't get in here and play around a little bit more and get something better and then I paint with uh, you know my opacity and flow down because I like to build up to these you know I like these little artifacts and, and texturing that you get by overlaying it so yeah let me know what you think hopefully that's helped you and uh, do me a favor, like, subscribe, share. I also got a new channel, Ram Studio Comics. It's more geared for uh, comic book art and tutorials. That is a paid channel, but be sure to check it out if you don't mind. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and we will talk to you soon.